And we kick off week 16 of our show, lcpioneers.com live, presented by PioStream, keeping you connected with student athletes, coaches, alumni, and members of the Lewis and Clark community four days a week, Tuesday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. We're live on Facebook Live and archive at youtube.com slash lcpios. Hi, I'm Ryan Guff. I'm the play-by-play voice and director of athletic communications for Lewis and Clark. We are the pioneers out of Portland, Oregon member of the NCAA Division III ranks and competing against over 430 institutions nationwide as part of the Northwest Conference uh, in Northwest Oregon, the state of Washington, nine institutions making up that conference and with Lewis and Clark's uh, tremendous overseas study program, great opportunities for our student athletes and students alike to go anywhere in the world and add to their education, experiential liberal arts uh, education. Uh, we're excited, excited to have a, a full slate of shows this week, and I uh, appreciate everyone who's been able to watch our past shows at youtube.com slash lcpios. Isam Tahir is our guest today. We will bring him in, a rising senior for Pioneers Track and Field. Uh, get a chance to catch up with what his summer's been like, some future plans heading into his senior season, and uh, you know, rhetoric and media studies major. We haven't had a ton of RHMS students uh, with us on the show, so a chance to kind of get a glimpse inside that major and as he just completed his junior year, uh, see what some of the highlights have been for him academically as well. You can get in touch with us in the Facebook Live comments below. You can also email us anytime, sports at lclark.edu. A great way to let us know uh, questions you have for upcoming guests. We usually announce our entire list uh, throughout the course of one week's worth of shows. We look into who we have coming up next week. Also, we usually post Saturday, Sunday, sometime over the weekend, all of our Facebook Live links, too, so you have a chance to see those ahead of time. So you can uh, get ready to ask us questions, even if you're not able to join us live, we can have those ready. You can also connect with us on Twitter and Instagram. LC Pios is the best way to go about doing that. At lcpioneers.com, a couple of pieces of information we want to turn your attention to, including our Northwest Conference Scholar Athlete list, including our first teamers from Pioneer Softball, Lisa Kumasaka. And from cross country and track and field, Sean Richardson was selected as the men's team pick for first team Northwest Conference Scholar Athlete. You can read that release right now at lcpioneers.com. We're also continuing our releasing of uh, the recent student athlete announcements, the incomers for 2020-21. And the most recent one that's posted up there is head coach James Yen, who was a recent guest of our show, the head golf coach for Lewis and Clark, announcing his addition to the women's golf team. So you can check that out. We'll have more releases coming up, including uh, for cross country and track and field, which this week on their own Instagram handle, LC Pios XCTF, they're starting to announce their incoming freshmen as well. So be sure to check that out. And that kind of is a callback to uh, head cross country coach, Matthew Burrow. He was our very first guest on the show. As I mentioned at the top, this is week 16 of the show. So we had him on the last day of March and you can find all of our past shows at youtube.com slash lcpios. Let's bring in our guests, a rising senior for Lewis and Clark cross country, or rather for track and field. Uh, Isam Tahir joins us on lcpioneers.com live. Uh, Isam, I appreciate you taking some time to talk to us and, and get a chance to look into uh, your upcoming senior year. I have to imagine, though, uh, you know, on the heels of the spring season and an indoor season that was such a solid run for your team, you broke a mm-hmm. record. Um, losing the rest of your, your spring season had to be tough. Let's take a look back at, at this last spring. What was it like for you personally when you found out you know, the season was not going to continue and kind of what were some of the adjustments you had to make accordingly? Yeah, um, I mean, like obviously, like you said, like the season started on like super strong. I mean, like me, at that, at that meet um, in Seattle, me and two others uh, all broke some of the indoor record. And so like that was probably one of the strongest starts we've had. Um, we had three indoor meets, I believe, that spring, um, which was the most that we had done since I've been there. So it was the earliest we had gotten started. It just felt good. Um, I didn't. We had one indoor meet at Linfield, which I didn't run in because I was still I was feeling some hamstring pain, so I, I opted out of that one. Um, and then, at, then, literally, like I think a week after that is when everything started shutting down. And we kind of, like, we're at practice and we're getting notifications about, like, U of O just shut down, OSU just shut down. And we're like, all right, I don't, like, I don't know if we're going to even be able to have a season. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty hard. I mean, I think, you know, th- it was also one of the closest that the team uh, has ever been since I've been there. We were doing a lot of team bonding stuff and just kind of getting into a good groove. So, yeah, shutting down that early was definitely 
not easy. And I think that's kind of been the theme as we've had other spring student athletes on the show. There was a lot of optimism around the spring season this year across the board with yeah. a lot of our teams. And so I imagine you're always going to have kind of that what if. Um, I am curious, you, you talked about the success that your team was having indoor. Uh, mm-hmm. It's kind of a two-part question. First, what's some of the primary differences running indoor versus outdoor, especially as a sprinter? And mm-hmm. then, and secondly, what's that crossover like as kind of the indoor season starts to wind down and the outdoor season starts? You know, How do you have to make adjustments if there are any? Yeah, so one of the big things for, for sprinting, at least for indoor, is, uh, well, for one, the track, you know, at like, at say, uh, at university of washington in seattle the track there is it's smaller than an outdoor track so like all the distances feel off because they have to kind of start you on a different area and it curves are tighter and stuff and they also they don't do the 100 meter dash they just do uh the 60 meter dash which is uh basically the only thing i did in indoor um and yeah i mean it it is it is a different sport altogether kind of just because the environment's different the i mean the wind is not a factor at all, so that doesn't affect your time at all. Um, closer lanes, tighter curves, like it's just, it just, it definitely feels different, and it's kind of a little bit harder to train for because we we have just our outdoor track. Um, but I don't know, it's it, it's I think the best way to prepare for outdoor season because it's like you get that competitiveness of like actually being in a track meet without like, you know, like something that you don't get quite as often in practice, but you know it's. It's not exactly outdoor yet, but it's getting close. So, I mean, I almost prefer it sometimes. You know, we're in a warm, like, enclosed area. It's, we're not out waiting in the cold for our, our event and stuff. So, that part's nice. But, no, it, it definitely is really different. Isam Tahir joining us on lcpioneers.com live Tuesday through Friday, 1130 a.m. Pacific on Facebook Live and archived youtube.com slash lcpios. Um, you, you talked about, you know, the camaraderie with this team mm-hmm. and, and how good things were in the, in the spring season. Right. Uh, when you think of like best stories about your time so far as a pioneer student athlete, uh, what comes to mind? That's hard. Um, I think, well, one of them, it's kind of it's a little bit sweet and sour, but uh, once we found out that we weren't going to have a season, uh, coach Campbell took us all to top golf and we just had, I mean, it's like at that point, you know, team bonding doesn't even really – it's not going to do anything for the next coming months because we weren't going to be at school. But just to have team bonding in spite of the fact that our season was canceled was a really cool thing. And for us to all just kind of have fun together and do something relaxing because, I mean, you know, every day we're out there, like, working really hard and get, and exhausting ourselves. And just and that's, you know, another way to bond. But just to be able to, <laughs> to do something kind of fun and relaxing with each other is definitely – those types of activities are definitely some of my, my best memories on the team. And we just shared a link to the Lewis and Clark coaching staff. You talk about coach Campbell. We have had on the mm-hmm. show uh, previously. What's it like competing for him, both in the tactical side, how he helps you with your performance, but also just mm-hmm. maybe more of the mentorship realm as well. Oh yeah, no, it's awesome. I mean, he's a hundred percent like the best coach I ever had. Um, it's, I mean, one of the things I like about, our track team in specific is he, he knows how each athlete differs from one another. And he's really able to kind of like change his training based on the athlete and based on the day and like how each person's feeling. Um, and he has like a different type of personal relationship with each, with each athlete, which is, which feels really cool. Um, in terms of how he's helped me, he's, I mean, he's just taught me like, little aspects of running and stuff that I didn't even know were there that I didn't even know I was doing right or wrong. Um, just stuff that like, you know, you wouldn't be able to pick up on unless you really talk to someone who really knew what they're talking about. Um, I mean, I'll come out of a meet and he'll be like, yeah, you just got to like change something with like the way your ankle moves a little bit or change this a little bit. And like, it totally fixes everything. Um, and then in terms of mentorship, yeah, I mean, he's just super supportive. Uh, willing to help you with things outside of track, you know, uh, just advice in general with school or whatnot and how to manage your time. And yeah, just a, a great overall mentor. Well, and then, you know, you have a coach who is also a student as well. I mean, you can't get right. more relatable than that finishing up graduate yeah. school in his first two years as the head coach. I mean, we talked to him about that. I'm curious, yeah. like 
at any point were you sitting here going like, how is this guy doing this with all the demands yeah. on his time? Well, especially, you know, this being his first year as, as the head coach. And then he's also doing school and like, then coronavirus hits and he's got having to deal with that. And it's just like, I'm like, I couldn't even imagine all the stuff he had on his plate. Like I'd, I'd be complaining to him and his office like, Oh, I don't want to go write this essay or whatever. And he'd be like, I got three essays to write and I got to like, deal with recruiting and stuff and planning out meets and stuff. So I'm like, yeah, I don't even know how he balances it all, but he does it really well. So, uh, Esam to here joining us on lcpioneers.com live. Uh, you're from the San Francisco, uh, California area, uh, Bay area, I should say, uh, curious, you know, what, what led you to Lewis and Clark in the first place? Why was this the, the place you chose and, and kind of how has that experience so far kind of matched up with some of the, the reasons you chose it? Yeah. Um, well, so yeah, I live in San Francisco. My parents are both from Portland and their families are both from Portland. They met up there. Um, and so I, I had been going to Portland, uh, like at least twice a year in my whole life to visit family and stuff. Uh, so I had known a little bit about like Lewis and Clark just from like hearing them talk about it and whatnot, but like, I didn't really know much about it. And then I got a letter, uh, in the mail or it might've been an email from Campbell talking, uh, asking me to come check out the track team and stuff. I think he looked at my high school times and, and some video and stuff. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, just to get to receive something from a coach. Um, and so then when I came and visited and, and saw how kind of similar it, it, like it felt like the stepping up college version kind of of my high school and just how like having like a close relationship with teachers and stuff and having to coach, he was like, you know, there 24 seven and stuff. Um, just all that aspect of like the tight knit community definitely made me a lot, like very attracted to the school. Now, uh, you have uh, this rhetoric and media studies major, as I mentioned, and we haven't had a chance to talk too thoroughly about this major, especially from someone going into to senior year. Uh, what's been some of the highlights in, in that regard, whether it was a class or a professor, something that's really stood out about that experience so far? Yeah, I mean, one thing that I guess I didn't really realize until, like, honestly, my junior year is, like, once you really commit to a major, I mean, I'm sure this is the case with almost every major, you really start to know your classmates who you're taking a bunch of the major requirement classes with and so obviously like i make friends on the track team and stuff but i made a lot of friends just through being in rhetoric and media people that i am con constantly having classes with i'll walk into a new class i'll be like oh my god like i've had like four classes with you by now um which is really cool kind of just building another small little group of just people who i've gone through the same class with um Specific to rhetoric and media, though, I, I really, uh, I'm someone who kind of needs to, like, in, be engaged uh, in a lot of my classes, so the fact that a lot of those classes are debate-based and just discussion-based, and we sit in a circle and talk, like, that's, for me, that's, like, one of my favorite things about it, is just being involved in, like, interesting discussions that kind of get your mind rolling and just, yeah, make you think about stuff. So then as you kind of turn your attention toward your last couple of semesters as a senior, mm -hmm. uh, what's kind of the direction that you're feeling out in terms of a possible profession using your RHMS experience? Yeah, so one of the things that I found out that I'm pretty good at is giving presentations and kind of talking to uh, a group of people and kind of pitching my idea, so to speak. Um, and so I'm you know, thinking about going into some sort of marketing job where, you know, I could essentially pitch uh, whatever my idea is uh, to a group of people and be able to really be social with it and, like, you know, talk and express my opinions and stuff. Um, I think, yeah, just the social aspect of, of, the, of that type of job is really what I'm looking for. Well, we wish you the best of luck uh, with, with that future. That includes this upcoming season. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to hear, you know, what your outlook is on this upcoming year. Like, do you kind of go back and forth worrying about is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Where are you at in terms of, of having everyone back on campus as soon as possible? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm definitely obviously like praying every day that we get that we get to have a season because it would be a real bummer if I didn't really have junior and senior season. Uh, but, you know, obviously, I guess, you know, safety comes first, so. I mean, whatever they got to do, they got to do. But I'm hoping that, you know, we can find a way to 
make some sort of a season work. Um, one of the things I have been really wanting to do since like freshman year is for us to break the record for the four by one relay. And so if we can hopefully have one more opportunity to, to give it a go and, and try and break that, then that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, no, I, I definitely am worried, you know, because obviously even fall, fall season right now is getting pretty iffy. Uh, people aren't really sure. So if the same thing happens this spring, it'll be, I'll definitely be on the edge of my seat. Now you've mentioned the four by, and I had a chance to go out to, uh, the cross country or sorry, the track and field championships last year for the conference. Mm-hmm. And that's where, I mean, it seemed like you, the pioneers could have filled the entire 100 meters with, with people, uh, you're yeah. in that in that, in that uh, uh, finals, that top finals, and you can't run. Walk us back to that moment. I actually meant Isam to have the video queued up because it was a great moment, and I, I don't uh-huh. have it. So, kind of walk us uh-huh. through your eyes where you can't finish that race because of an injury. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, the whole thing kind of goes back to even freshman year. We we're in the four by one in the in the championships, and I was about to run four races that day: the four by one, one hundred, two hundred, and four by four. And I pulled my hamstring in that one. And so then flash forward sophomore year, it was in, I think, the 200 prelims. And I pulled my other hamstring. Uh, so then I was just done. Um, and, yeah, so then the 100-meter final was coming up. And, like, it was going to be tight, like, between, like, the, you know, a few of the spots for, like, I think, like, second, third, and fourth place, uh, like, as an overall team. And we needed points. And... I was going to get a point if I just finished, so they just had me walk it. <laughs> Which At first, I was kind of nervous to do because it's like, I'm just going to be walking. It's going to take forever. Everyone's going to be, like, looking at me. But it was it was actually pretty cool. Like, a bunch of the team, like, walked next to me and stuff. And, I mean, if I'm able to get some sort of points for the team, then that's the best I can do. But, no, yeah, it definitely – it was too bad. I mean, I didn't get to run the 4x1 with them that year. But they subbed in. I'm trying to remember who they subbed in. And I can't remember right now, but someone subbed in for me for the four by one and they still took third overall and they got medals. So that was really awesome that they were still able to pull that one out. But yeah, no, the record is definitely what we're looking for. No, it was a great moment. Uh, best of, you know, bad situation. And I don't know if it was yeah. louder at any point during the day with all your teammates on the, the side of the track, you pump yeah. your arms a little bit. Uh, I mean, I, well, <laughs> that's, that's something that we haven't shared yet. So I'll try to dig through it after our interview. We'll put it out on Twitter or Instagram uh-huh. or something like that. Make sure people get a chance to see it. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, I'm, I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping everyone can stay safe. And in the best yeah. case, everyone gets back to campus. That is certainly our intention. Uh, and hopefully get to see you and your teammates sooner than later. Uh, Isam here. appreciate you joining us on lcpioneers.com live. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, Ryan. Yeah, that's a, a fun interview, uh, and it really was a great moment uh, with with him last year at the Northwest Conference Track and Field Championships, and uh, he had a, a bunch of, of teammates. I mean, just a really fast class. Um, top of my head, Matthew Weston and Bryce Johnson, Aiden Verba Hamilton, um, Xavier Tharp, uh, all those guys, you know, just really key uh, additions to to the the group and, and and definitely realistic possibility of breaking that record for the four by um yeah a really neat guy um he's one of those guys Isam where uh you know we're taking pictures for headshots for the year and he's got a group of people around him making him laugh and he's just energetic and smiley and I think you know I didn't know until he just shared with us you know that marketing avenue possibility for him uh, I think he would do really well just from a personality standpoint because yeah he has that magnetism that that can be so helpful in the presentation world. So I uh, certainly hope to see him uh, maybe even hosting a, a guest spot on our show in the near future. That was a lot of fun. Appreciate him taking the time to join us. Uh, looking ahead to the rest of our week, as I mentioned, uh, kind of back to uh, four days a week. We had a nice little break in there. Uh, good conversation. The last uh, two weeks with head coach Angela Dendis of the strength and conditioning program, Matt Brown from men's basketball hosted a show with his teammate, Dalen Floyd. You can find both of those at youtube.com slash LC And then looking ahead tomorrow, we'll have Ryan Hayes, recent graduate from the men's tennis program, uh, incredibly decorated finish to his career academically and throughout his impact uh, as a holistic student athlete. Excited to see what's ahead for him. Amanda Phillips from cross country and track and field, a recent inductee to the Lewis and Clark College Hall of Fame, Athletics Hall of Fame class of 2018, but was inducted last fall. A chance to talk to her about her story 
Um, it was one of the most impactful stories of the night. And so excited to share that with you on Thursday. And then longtime head coach uh, Jim Tercy entering his 11th season with Lewis and Clark, but he's been a, a college soccer coach for a very long time, over 320 wins and the women's soccer side. I'll have a chance to talk to him on Friday. And we have released the women's soccer recruits already. So a chance for him uh, to get on the show and talk in person about some of his incoming student athletes as well. So we look forward to having you back on Wednesday, 1130 a.m. Pacific time. We are live on Facebook Live and archived at youtube.com slash LCPios. You can get involved. You can email sports at lclark.edu and also find us online, LC Pios, uh, LC Pioneers rather, on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Ryan Goff. Big thanks to Esam. Thanks to you for joining us and having fun with us as well. We'll talk to you again soon for more lcpioneers.com live I stream live on Facebook and archived on YouTube at youtube.com slash lcpios. Goodbye, everybody. Hi, I'm Nick Lombardi. Um, something I've learned at Winterham this year Lewis is Clark how is to amazing. communicate a vision. My biggest Beautiful counter in small classes. We would become, you get this, you get this sense and the feeling the that this is a place is that you can spend full years. I, I was so comfortable learning and growing here. There's no ostentation. There's no pretension, no status, everyone's just here to learn. To this bustling metropolitan area. The overseas program is giving you the opportunity to explore the world, go to places that you never thought of. Just come here, just visit this school, and you're gonna fall in love with it. It's time to explore Lewis and Clark. My favorite spot on campus is like right outside the Dovecote, little benches and there's flowers growing there and you can get a little coffee at the Dovecote and sit there. My favorite spot on campus is definitely the weight room. Um, I get that uh, everybody loves like the gardens or uh, the manor house, but um, our facilities for athletics here are actually amazing too and the weight room is definitely my favorite spot. My favorite spot on campus um, would either be the Glade outside of the athletic facilities or South Campus. What is my favorite spot on campus? I really like the back porch of the Manor House. Um, it looks out on Mount Hood and on a clear day, it's super beautiful just to sit around with friends.